Oh, I see a negative. Oh, and a positive. Dude, look at that. See if we got. Whoa, three. Look at that. Three. Oh. 20. Whoa. Look at that. I caught it. Well, what do you get when you combine huge prehistoric lakes with an unstable volcanic region that billowed out millions of tons of super fine volcanic ash? You get the famous fossil rich Green River Formation. That's what you get. Get ready for layers of fossil fish and insight that is geology rich on this episode of Rock Counting USA. And um, yes, I know that fish and rich don't technically rhyme uh, all the time. That would be a crime. I'm out. Every rock hound has seen, and probably owns, a fossil fish from the Green River Formation. Collectors and museums all over the globe display these exquisitely preserved samples of flora and fauna. I had dreamed of these fossil quarries just a few miles from Kemmerer, Wyoming, since I was a child. And it only took me about half a century to finally visit for a little ancient fishing of my own. I teamed up with my oh. older brother Fred and we descended upon Fossil Safari, a fantastic fossil quarry operation owned and operated by Rick Hebden. Upon arriving at Fossil Safari, Rick or his knowledgeable assistant George Putnam will supply you with the tools and the techniques to quickly locate and extract a trunk load of fossil treasures. I barely had time to put on my safety gear before my brother Fred immediately liberated several fish from the piles of shattered strata. Oh, I see a negative. Oh, and a positive. Look at that beautiful little guppy. I think we're still going to be hungry though. Oh yeah, there's not much there to eat. After letting my brother get a little overconfident, it was time for me to split my first chunk of the Green River Formation. <laughs> and it was worth the wait. My first rock, and I bet he's still good on this side. So yep. move, move in close. Yep. So look at there. Got him right there. All right. All right so, so now we're going to get some expert instruction. Okay. So we want to start out. We want to start out and then let it find its spot, right? Yep. Your first one. First one. Yep. First rock that I split open here at Fossil Safari, and there was a fish in the first rock. Folks, this isn't staged. There's no way to know. This is what you find here. This is phenomenal. First rock, George. Boom, baby. This place is kind of fishy. Here's somebody's pile that they just kind of left here. Maybe they went to lunch or something. So look at that. Look at all those fish. Look at the detail. All right, time for the reveal. Oh! Both sides. Both. Positive, negative. Look at that. Look at that. There's another one up there. Kind of broke him. Oh, yeah. It's like Break a few eggs to get a you know, yep. bacon cake. <laughs> yep. Now that's, you know, nothing to keep. Alright. We're learning away, a page at a time. There there. It is. Okay. Here we go, Randall. Let's right, see. There's a tail. Tail. Oh, look at that. Right there. Look at that. Oh, it's alright. Uh, yeah. There. And another one. See that? Yeah. Wow. So, careful, careful. Carol, here. Yeah. Okay, so we remember the one we split, split right on it. So now you look here. Here's the vertebrae, the one that's covered up, right next to it, and he's actually. See that? It starts uncovering. Look at that. So we'll leave it like that. We know there's a fish there. In fact, I usually take my pencil and mark them. And when you cut it, you'll have two fish on that same right, rock. Because right. you take that home and clean it down. Yep. And, two, and that's Revealing. that's like the perfect fish because it's all there. Right. Where this one split apart, you see the that's negative where the vertebrae are. The positive. It's still, it's still cool though. Oh yeah, it's oh, awesome. Cool. See, but his backbones are in this side. Yep. And that's the negative, but this will be 100% positive because all the bones are still there, still covered. Mm -hmm. 
As you know, one of the best parts of rock hounding is meeting fellow fossil enthusiasts from all over the country. And you know me, I'm not shy. And we caught up with Nick from New Orleans, and boy, he's been all over the upper Midwest, but uh, the Tetons, Yellowstone, but he's proud of something laying on the ground. Found uh, this is a positive and negative of the same fish. Yes. And um, here's another fish that was right in the volcanic ash, which I was told by the, the guide here. And here's another big fish that fabulous. once I get home, I plan to chisel out a little bit more. Now, is this your first trip here to a fossil safari? Yes, it is. And what do you think so far? On a scale of 1 to 10, what do you give it? Uh, 10. Solid 10. And we caught up with Richard from New Orleans. And I said, Rich, have you found anything yeah, exciting? He said, I got a whole string of fish. I said, yeah, you're right. I got a whole, I got a whole string of fish. Right? Oh. Coming around. Uh, Different layers coming across. Uh, lost a little bit of one up here, but uh, it's a uh, it's a nice little plate. And Wonderful. How many? How many of you came up? Seven of us. Man, that's awesome! Awesome. Spreading the rock counting love it's to the next awesome. generation. Yeah. We don't get too many fossils uh, in. No, not in New Orleans. Yes, in New Orleans. Yeah. yeah. A little further north. I told my wife, honey, we need to split. Of course, I meant layers of volcanic ash. Not our relationship. Oh, here's the big reveal. Oh, 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 oh. Fish everywhere. And some coprolite right there. Scales, coprolite, fish, you name it here at Fossil Safari. What? After an hour or so of frantic splitting of the hardened layers of volcanic ash and striated varves of lime mud, we caught up with Rick and he explained the basic geology of this internationally famous Lagerstad. His passion and excitement for the thrill of the hunt hasn't faded one bit in over 50 years, and it shows. So uh, Rick, what are we looking at here? Well, this is the, the most prolific layer in the Green Earth Formation. And it's called, they refer to it as the sandwich beds because of those different ash layers that's scattered throughout. But what I was pointing at was the top up there starts where those two big thick ash layers are, those orange colored rocks. Yes. From there down is what we work on. There up is all considered overburden, and that's what I've been dozing off over there. So we start, you know, you can see it's already fractured, so we just start pulling those fractures out and splitting the rock up. So, and it gets better the further down you go, so right close to the bottom. That's where most of the stingrays come from. So a lot of the most interesting stuff. So tell, tell us about some of the interesting things you've seen over the years here. It's a big varanid lizard. The thing was 52 inches long. <sighs> came out on one big rock, one piece. It was unbelievable. It's black. Yeah, and it was all covered. That's what the way you prefer to find them. It's covered up in the matrix and you need to see the bumps. That way you can clean down to them and you get a 100% perfect right, fossil. Right. When they split apart, you get kind of two copies, positive, negative, yep. and that's okay, especially for the little fish, but you don't want a big or something really nice split apart because then you lose bones and stuff. But that lizard came from kind of about midway in the, in the quarry. What, what other things have you found? Crocodiles, birds, turtles. Stingrays are always How about fun. leaves or any plants? You know, there is plants in here, but this this white limestone rock doesn't preserve very well. They okay. don't have any color. Now, the other quarry, it's called the 18 inch layer quarry. It's a dark oil shale, and we get beautiful leaves, plants, palm fronds, oh. lots of nice stuff over there. And the fish are always bigger. There's a couple up in the office there. So, uh, Rick, what we're looking at here are layers of ash fall. So, the thicker they are, what did you say? Well, that's, that's a lot of ash. That's a huge eruption, massive. So are we talking Yellowstone? What, what are we talking yeah, about here? Yeah, big super volcano stuff. Then that one really good layer, the ash of fish, that's it right there. And that, a kill layer. It killed thousands of fish. We found birds, we found everything on that. Suffocated them, whatever. Yeah, they, that ash right come down and killed them. And, and, and then the ash layers sink to the bottom. They sunk to the bottom, that stuff settled on top of them. And yeah, look at that, we got a vertebrae right there. Yeah, you got a nice big fish here. Yep, and see uh, a lot of yeah. covered ones. You know, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. <laughs> 12 fish on that little rock right there. What'd you call that earlier, Rick? You said that's that's candy rock? 
Well, from here on down, that's what we call candy rock. Because it's, <laughs> it's the sweet, the sweet, sweet stuff. Yeah, it's just like it's sweet. It's like yeah. lots of fish. The pay dirt. The pay dirt. Yeah. The pay rock. <laughs> There's some really good layers above too. It just depends when you have an event if it kills, you know. Yeah, and we find most of the bigger fish are up higher. Even. Wow. So every one of these has fish on it that's worth keeping. Look at that, folks. The hundreds and hundreds of slabs, each of them with fish, sometimes multiple. Yeah. Phenomenal. Then when we get a pallet full, we take it over to the saws and trim them down. And then they go home and get clean. So you're cleaning fish. <laughs> oh, look at that. Look at the fish that's in there all covered up. Three, four, five, Look at that six, one. Six, that seven. one. Yeah, this is loaded. Oh yeah, this one's a wall hanger here. Yeah. It's, wow. It's covered with fish. I've heard of people putting a trophy fish on the wall. Oh, you yeah. can do the same thing with a fossil <laughs> safari. <laughs> you can See, that's the negative split off of that same rock we looked at over there. Oh my. Look at that death plate right there. All right, Rick, we got a monster here. What's the what's the species or genera or whatever? What do we have here? Well, that's Ferriotis testis. Dude. That's called, you can see the, the teeth. Look at that. that. They're obviously very carnivorous. I eat lots of these little ones, I'm sure. Got some so, piranhas? <laughs> yeah, they're kind of like the piranha of the fossil lake. Phenomenal. They taste like chicken. <laughs> All right, so what are we doing here, George? Okay, you come in here. You come into it. Okay, just peeling apart like. Ah, beautiful, but the length. We watch overhead. Safety first. Make sure you get your glasses. Get your gloves. Yeah. And look out above you. It's like Christmas morning. You open it up, you never know what you're going to get. After finding our fair share of beautifully preserved fossil fish, we were treated to one final slab that Rick predicted would hold at least 20 critters on just one layer. Let's see if he was right. All right, so Rick and George navigated us to this incredible slab. We've been working there so far. Eight fish have been exposed. Reveal Fred, time. Here we go. See if we got- Whoa, three. Look at that. Three. Three good ones. Look oh, at good that. tonight. <laughs> You've heard of three blind mice, how about three dead fish? Look at that. Oh yeah. All right. So we're up to about 11 fish. On and this, you're, you're putting your hand plate. on the three I found. Thank you very little. Yeah. All right. Oh, got a pop. Okay. So it looks like maybe this entire, we're hoping for several dead families here. And I know this sounds very morbid. Oh man, you're getting the whole, look oh, at that. Oh. Looky there. One, three more, two, dude. <laughs> One more layer there, right? Oh, oh look at there. Are you still rolling? <laughs> wow. Man, this place is. So, how, how many did you predict, Rick? I said 20. What do we got to go well, through? There's three, there four, was... five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 17, I think. 14, 15. Well, we got five to go. There's. He's still got a layer to go here. Five under there. <laughs> Whoa. Another good size one. Man, we're getting close to 20 fish on this one slab. Rick predicted 20. George, did you doubt for a second? Nope. Shooting video because a lot of people back home do not believe that Fred McWilson actually works. <laughs> There's one. Oh. There's one. What a death plate. Oh! 20! Wahoo! Look at oh, I called it! Hey Rick! Hey Rick, I need some lottery numbers! I need some lottery numbers right now! Give me Powerball! There's two right there. Oh, okay. There's one right there. Amazing. So what we're gonna do now is, George is gonna take this down from this huge slab with this, uh, you know, three inch fish, and he's gonna take out the excess 
and let's take a look at this process. So notice, put a frame on it, safety first. Take good care of my fishy. Here's the process. Glad we got Alright, so what George has just said is that there's more fish that needs to be liberated from the rock and they recommend using like dental picks, very small tools, and kind of tap away to remove that thin layer of overburden to reveal your price. We've got a half day rate, four hours is the most popular. Some people are in a hurry. They just found it at Fossil Butte. They found out they could dig, but they're on a mission. They're going somewhere. So they come in, they pay 30 bucks an hour. They find a few fish, throw them in the carps. They're on their way. What are some other groups that you have come out here regularly? Oh, a lot of school, college groups, uh, geology classes. Uh, okay, there's another group expected today. It's from the Field Museum in Chicago. They come out for two weeks every summer. I hear you also have had family reunions come out here too, Fossil Safari. Yeah, that's a popular, you know, people get their families together and, and uh, they want to do something to kill the day. They come out here, have a picnic and dig fossils and everybody gets fun. The kids dig for a while, then most of them sit over there and throw rocks over the edge and have a great time. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> now, are there group rates for those kind of situations? Yeah, we got 10 people or more. So we give them a little discount and Kirk try and encourage groups, you know. Excellent. Yeah. Oh, I see a negative. Oh, and Very few things in life seem to live up to the hype, but this unique collecting Whoa, locale great. clearly does. Rugged high desert scenery, unlimited fossils, and friendly experts who will guide you every step of the way. This place has it all. Here's a cool little fact about Kimmer, Wyoming. Believe it or not, the very first JC Penny store was, oh, there goes that, flipper reel. That's good blooper reel. The very first J.C. Penny store. Here's a cool little fact about Kimmer, Wyoming. Believe it or not, the very first J.C. Penny store was right here in 1902 in Kimmer, and they've kind of kept the building and the storefront looking very vintage. So if you're in Kimmer, you might want to swing by if you like kind of old timey stuff. I tell you what, I cannot wait to head back west to visit Fossil Safari for a second time, and a third time, and, and a fourth time. And when people ask me, what did you do on vacation? I'll just smile and say, I did a whole lot of fishing.